Welcome to a breath of fresh career. This is season two, episode 10. Uh, 10. I'm joined here by Ashish Mattel, who's a director of strategic partnerships at, at GoPuff. I've known Ashish for a bunch of years now. Um, Ashish, is a, he's a husband, a father, two children, loyal employee, as I mentioned, director of strategic partnerships at a really cool company called GoPuff. We're going to talk about them in a second. Uh, one thing that many don't know about Ashish is the guy played water polo uh, at Syracuse University. Wicked tough sport, and he actually applies that sink or swim mentality to uh, to his day to day life and, and career. Ashish, welcome to a breath of fresh career. Yeah, man, love back to here. I um, it was it's funny. I I come into the office yesterday and uh, turn turn on CNBC, and and they have a, a squawk box. They have a um a little a little piece called CNBC disruptors, and. Sure enough, co-founder GoPuff is on on Squawk Box talking about micro fulfillment centers, and I'm like, "Wow, um, I, I got the Shisha on a breath of fresh career uh, the next day." It was a pretty awesome way to to, uh, to to marry these together. Nothing's better than getting lucky, right? Like timing, timing <laughs> and luck are sometimes everything. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, let's let's just jump right into this. T- tell us, tell the listeners about GoPuff. What what is GoPuff? Yeah. Um, so GoPuff's a, a really fascinating business. We are um, the leader in a category that, frankly, we created, we're calling it the instant need space. Um, and it's getting getting attention today, and there's, there's lots of people coming in. But we're basically the go-to solution for uh, customers' everyday needs. We uh, fulfill items from cleaning to home products to over-the-counter medicine to food and drink and alcohol in many markets. And we're doing it for $1.95 flat delivery fee. We have 400 total sites across the U.S. today. Uh, that includes 200 MFCs or micro fulfillment centers. We'll talk about those in a minute. Um, 161 Bevmo stores. It's an acquisition we made maybe five or six months ago. Bevmo is one of the largest specialty um, alcohol retailers in California, um, and we deliver to customers in 650 cities today. Amazing! Wow. Yeah, that's 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 awesome. So, so how does GoPuff work? Yeah, so this is um, this is the, the the sort of secret sauce of the business, if you will, and it's something that I don't think most people really understand when you just like look at GoPuff, right, um, and think about the delivery space that we're in, uh, and the unique parts of the business really set us apart. And you know, it's really genius to be honest with you, and and, and I run through it. Um, but when I when I first heard how GoPuff worked, I was like, man, like. I don't get it. And then once you like really peel it back, you're like, oh, actually, that's genius. So what really sets us apart is that we're vertically integrated. We um, have MFCs, again, these, these warehouses across the country and, and products in them that we own. So we're, we buy products, put them in our warehouses. We're delivering really from our sites. So we're not relying on a middleman to get out to the customer. Yeah, when you place an order through our app or on our website, it's mainly app, uh, app-based business, our employees, pick and pack the order from our warehouse. That happens in about 90 seconds. We then hand that off to our driver partner and they bring it right to the customer doors. Because we've built this like hyper lo- hyper local logistics network, uh, we are able to deliver extremely quickly. It's just like surprise and delight where we can get something to our customers in under 30 minutes today. And again, those products range from over-the-counter medicine, baby, pet, snacks, drink, local favorites. That's a big focus of ours, grocery staples and more. We continue to grow the assortment based on like customer needs. And again, because we're the, because we like own this end to end experience, like we can, we know what customers want. We know what we're thirsting for. We can react really quickly market by market, but it's really this magic experience of you place an order and boom, it's at your house in 26 minutes. Wow. You know, when I first went, when I first realized that you went over there, when we spoke about you going over there, um, you know, I obviously did some research on the company and it, I had the feeling that you know, here I am a consumer, right? Putting in an order for a bottle of Advil, uh, that, that some, some, some delivery person out there would go to a stop and, you know, we have stop and shop up here, you know, some grocery store and buy a bottle of Advil and deliver it to my house. But you guys actually have the, uh, the micro fulfillment centers that have all the, this product there. Yeah. So we have, um, we have these micro fulfillment centers. They have a couple thousand products each. Uh, and the assortment is um, a combination of 
let's call it like the staples, right? The Advil, the Coke, the Pepsi products, the snacks, the drinks, the chips, the alcohol, where we have the licenses to do so. Um, and then we are also focused on like very local assortment. So like, how do we make sure we're delivering the best donuts in Philadelphia, the best coffee in Miami, you know, the best beer in uh, Denver um, to like have like, you know, we're a national company that operates very hyper locally and, you know, not only do we sort of want to serve the customers that way, but we want to serve the communities that way as well, right? Like, how do we think about community impact in, in these local markets? How do we think about job creation in these local markets? Um, but yeah, that's right. We are we are um, holding the inventory, right? And so, like, we have a saying, you know, we're we're monetizing products, not people. Um, you know, we have a flat dollar ninety five delivery fee. We have driver partner network, but because we own the products, like, we have product margin. It's, it's amazing. It's, uh, you know, I, I, I don't even, you're, you're right. It is confusing when you looked at it the first time you were, and you said, you were like, well, I don't really understand how this works, but that's uh it's, it's really amazing. I, you know, I, I kind of live up in the country, so I'm not entirely sure go, go puff, go puff service services our area yet. Plus I'm in a good old boy state of Connecticut and like with like, you know, liquor laws and all this other stuff. I know that historically Connecticut's a really, really difficult state. Um, Tell us a little bit about uh, director of strategic partnerships. What's the what's the day in the life? What do you do? What do you do every day? You know, it's um, it's a good question. Uh, it's uh, one. It's super fun. Two. It's like extremely varied, uh, which I, like I think goes well with my personality. And like the one thing I'll just kick off and say is like the highs are really high in the job, but the lows are also really low. Um, but 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 it's fun, right? And so look like. I personally believe in, you know, I'd be curious if you agree with that, like the, the term, like strategic partnerships in that role, it like means a lot of things, right? And oh, yeah. it, I almost feel like it's getting a bit generic. And and so I really think like, what does it mean, you know, for me and for GoFuff and how do you like sort of stand out? Um, and and I think it's like one of these things where you, you make the most of it. And so like a day in the life of me, it's got a couple of components. And I think the first thing is, like I really um, spend time integrating with a business. Like I, I want to know the people. I want to know the challenges. I want to know what we're good at and what we're bad at, and like where there's opportunities. And I want and I want to build these like really amazing cross-functional relationships. And you know, sometimes you just set time aside to like understand something. So for example, we have so many parts of our business that go up. There's dri- there's a driver partner network. There's the um, the sort of work, MFC fulfillment network. There's a merchandising team. There's the you know marketing team. There's a there's like all of these different components. And and while we operate like like sometimes you're operating in style, sometimes you're not. But it's like getting to know those teams, understanding like what what are the pain points and how can you help and how that applies to my job is like I'm a, I'm often or like the partnership seems often the first line of defense on a bunch of these things, right? So like you know someone reaches out and I figure out how to partner with a company. Um, and the magic of like creating a great partnership is like one relationship driving disproportionate results. And so how do you think about um, a company and like they may have one idea, but like how does that idea apply to every different part of the business and how can you like really like help everyone else out? And so like, for example, I'm working with like a major mobile phone carrier, right? And they've got, um, you know, they've got a way to bring customers to the GoPuff platform. Like great, we love new customers, right? But like. If you if you think about like what are the different um, like assets or like opportunities that you could do with like a, a large mobile phone carrier, and then you think about how do you apply that to GoPuff. So new customers are great, but I've got thousands of uh, of employees in the field, right? Between um, all of the MFCs that we have, we've got driver partners as well, and like there's an opportunity to help them out as well. Like, can we create a program with a large mobile phone carrier to give them discounts, Wi-Fi cheap or whatever it is that like is great for them, makes them more loyal to GoPuff, helps with employee retention, right? Um, and like, how do you think about that as like, just one example? And I think in every, in every conversation I have, like really, really spend time thinking about like, okay, I get it at the surface level, but then how is it like, what else can we do? How can we both extract value from this partnership? How do we help them? How do they help us? And like, what's that like sort of magic sort of intersection of all of these things. And then how do you apply that to the company? That is really, that's really cool. Um, you don't even think about the impact that a mobile, major mobile phone carrier uh, could have to even just the the um, 
the network, right? The, 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 the company right. network. Um, so you're in the Philly area, go, go, go puffs in the Philly area headquartered there, essentially. Um, how'd you find out about these guys? Yeah. Um, <laughs> so it's interesting, interesting story. So one look like, I, I, uh, I mean, I live outside of the city. GoPup is started and headquartered in Philly. So, like, I had heard about them, right? Like, the, the tech scene in Philly. Yeah, but Philly this is a year and a half that. ago. This is a year and a half ago. So, like, a lot of people hadn't heard of GoPup a year and a half ago. No, no, 100%. Like, let me tell you the story. Like, so, like, I heard about them just because they're in Philly. And, like, you know, like, one or two people that I know, like, work at GoPup. I'm like, okay, like, what's this GoPup thing? Every once in a while, when I'm down in the city, I see like a box wrap with like GoPuff. I'm like, okay, like I like I've heard of it. I don't really get it. What's GoPuff? The name's dumb. I don't really understand. Um, and then um, what actually happened for me is, and you were like kind of part of this story is uh, to take a step back. Before GoPuff, I'd spent ten years in Shoprunner, uh, which is like in the e-commerce space. I was a third employee there, um, and when I had moved. I'm from Philly. I was in Manhattan at the time doing like another sort of startup thing. And when I had moved back to Philly, I kind of caught the startup bug, right? And I was like 25 at the time. And I remember thinking to myself, like, I don't know what I would do next in Philly if I want to stay in this like industry. But like, I'm young and I'm dumb. I'm going to do this for three years and then figure it out, right? Like yeah. the shop owner thinks I'm kind of cool. And I had this moment, like when I hit or was about to hit my 10 year anniversary at Trap Corner. I was like, man, like I've been here for 10 years. And like, it's been a great thing. I've learned a lot, I've done a lot of different things. I've definitely like really grown my career, my network, et cetera. But I was like, I still don't know what I would do next in Philadelphia. And like 10 years later, I'm married, I have a kid, another one on the way. And you like start to really think about like, okay, what's like your next career move? And where is that? Because you're gonna move as much as I didn't want to, like now's the time to do it. So like I started looking in Manhattan and San Francisco, you and that's the time that I started talking to you again. We had looked at a couple of opportunities together. And then um, I was like just frustrated one day and I, I called uh, a good friend of mine who was at GoPa, who was like a senior, senior leader at GoPa. And I was like, do I need to move? Like, that was like my question to him. And, and, and he said, let's get dinner. And wow. so we did, and then we just, it just went from there. So it, it, it was like, I was familiar with it. At, look, a year and a half ago, GoPuff was quiet. Like we were not, like if you were to Google GoPuff, frankly, like there was very little information and the information that's out there, like wasn't, wasn't accurate from like how much money they've raised, what they're up to, how right. big they are. Like you just really didn't know. They were still building the um, infrastructure, right? They were still like, yeah. Look, the, the business grew really quickly, really quietly because of like the unique part of our business. We got the model right before and, and we knew it's like people were coming. Right. Uh, and so we wanted to like really get the model right. And so like, you know, it, it grew quickly, quietly. Now I think you can like actually get some good information about GoPuff just by researching it, but it didn't exist a year and a half ago. Um, we were like a little bit of a sleeper company. And so it just, it's just like that combination of like, kind of heard a little bit about it, never used the product before and kind of knew some people and, and, and that's, that's how it happened. Sometimes those are the best, the best ones, man. That's, that's awesome. It's not, it's not what you know, yeah. or who you know, I mean, like you said, you, you, you knew about go go puff in the Philly area. You were seeing the, you know, a banner on the side of a city bus going around in downtown <laughs> Philly, but that was like it. Right. Yeah. And then you realize that yeah, you had a, a sure. friend there. What, um, so you were living in, did you start your career in Manhattan? Um, GE, GE is essentially, or was essentially a Connecticut company when you were working for GE. Did you, how'd you, I, let me ask, how'd you get your start in the industry? What, you know, this exciting uh, industry. Do you know the story? I don't. Okay. It's a good one, actually. Okay. Um, and, it, was... and it all starts at a sandwich shop. Right. So, yeah. um, yeah, yeah. I mean, so my my high school job was working at this place called the Hoagie Experience. Uh, it's a sandwich shop right nearby. Like literally, the, the literally hoagie, my mom. The Hoagie. Me, like before. The Hoagie Experience. I love that. And like literally my mom got me off there. So the, the story of the Hoagie Experience is um, the guy who opened it 
Um, he's a guy named Mike Golden. And he, I don't know, I think he might have been 30 or something at the time. And he had done startup stuff and was, has been, continues to be super successful, right, in his, in his career. And he kind of was like, okay, I've done, I don't know, two or three of these things. I've had a lot of exits. And, you know, now I'm like married. I have a kid on the way. Like, I'm just going to stop working. I'm 31. I'm going to retire. And then he, like, wasn't working and was like, you know what? I'm going to open a sandwich shop. And so he did. And, like, I literally just, like, applied for a job, right? And I work with him all the time. And, like, just law, like, we just got along really well, right? Like, we'd, like, make hoagies and cheesesteaks and, and work together. And I, like, learned his story. And, like, I like the stock market. He likes the stock market. Like, there's, like, a really great connection. And I just loved, like, his stories about, like, all of the stuff he did, you know, in the like dot com heyday and sort of before and the successes and the failures and all that stuff. And so then, you know, he after a couple of years of this, so like I, I I worked there for two or three years or the, at the at the hoagie store. And like Mike starts to get back into like startups and e-commerce. And so when I'm a, a sophomore in college at this point, he is the CEO of an e-commerce retailer that you know is like it's called home decor products they were like one of the first big guys to sell like toilets and bathtubs and hardware online right like very complicated business uh and it was also in edison new jersey which is about 90 minutes from where we both live and so i you know he and i stay in touch and i call mike and you know like mike and i'm a sophomore in college um you know i had like these internship opportunities what, what do you think right and he's like yeah why don't you just come work for me Wow. for the summer. I was like, I don't know what you're going to do, but like, just come work for me for the summer. Like show up at my house at seven in the morning, we'll drive together. You know, you, you, we'll figure out a role and whatever. And, and I was like, okay, like, great. I'll do that. And, um, so I did. And like, we would like for three months, I'd show up at his house. We'd drive together. Like I just learned so much, even just being in the car with him because he'd take all these phone That's calls. That's what I was going to say. That's gotta be like an like, invaluable, like, like 40 minute ride, you know? Yeah. Right. Right. And, and so like, that happened, right? So then the net, so then that was super valuable, right? And then while I worked for him, I, he was like, all right, like, I, I don't remember, like do, do all of these things. And, and one of the things at the time was like, listen, like we're an e-commerce business, but people are still calling us on the phone to place orders. Cause like the company product, they, they don't understand how to order a bathtub on the, on the phone. It's like, and he's like, like the phone lines, like 10 minute hold times. Like just like start picking up the phone and take orders. So like I did that and it like turns out I was pretty good at that. And then at some point he's like, okay, like, can you figure out like this Google AdWords thing? Like, you know, we spent all this money on Google. Like, why don't you take some of the budget and just go, you know, do that or whatever, right? Um, and she takes and, them off. And so just like, yeah. yeah, so it was, it was super fun. So then the next summer I was like, okay, that was fun. Like, let me get some different experience now. And so I, I took a internship at GE. So GE has a bunch of these like leadership training programs. Um, and so I joined the FMP program, the financial management leadership training program, uh, as an intern, the way that program works is like this two year program, you rotate across different parts of the business every six months. And then when you come out of that, you have like a bunch of amazing opportunities, both inside and outside of GE. So I did the internship at GE healthcare, one of their bigger businesses, Milwaukee for a summer. And it was fun. like, you know, corporate finance, learned a lot, like very, you know, very different, like very, sort very of big company. Yeah. You know, right. Yeah. And so coming and you out of that, realized like you're, you didn't want to be in that industry. <laughs> well, no, actually, um, I like drank the Kool-Aid a bit. And so coming out of that, I, uh, you get like job offers, right? So you finish your internship, you like get a job offer if you do a good job. So you like walk into your senior year of college, like feeling like you're on top of the world. Cause you have like this job offer from GE. You just got to get through that last year and like not entirely screw up and like you're sad, right? Yeah. And so I got a job <laughs> offer to work at GE Money, which is based in, GE Money doesn't exist anymore. It's part of the consumer finance business based in Connecticut. Um, and I called Mike. I was like, all right, Mike, I have a job offer from GE. What do you think? And he's like, don't do it. I was like, okay, that's weird. Why? Why? It's like the best. This is like an amazing program. He's like, how much are they paying you? I was like, I told him a number. And he's like, I'll just pay you that to not do it. Like, just come work for me and figure out what you want to do. But like, this isn't for you. Right. Four. I was like, okay. I just like had my parents pay for four years of college. I can't call them and be like, guess what? Like I'm just passing on GE to figure out my life with this guy. Right. And they obviously like love Mike at this point too. But, um, I was like, 
I really appreciate it, Mike. I also knew, like, knowing Mike, that he was he was going to go do something else pretty soon and not, you know, continue with his. He, he'd done it. It scaled off. It was time for him to. Yeah, he was a Rolling Stone man. So it's like I really how he does it, right? He he just he every right. everything the, t- the guy touches turns to gold. I'm sure he's one of those guys. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I was like, I'm going to go do the GE thing. Uh, and so I got the offer, did the GE thing. My, I, and again, it's like a six month rotation, right? So about three or four months into my first six month rotation, and, and you know, I was, I was living in Dayton, Ohio at the time, because that, that's where that rotation was. I came home, I like had lunch with Mike just to catch up. He's like, okay, I'm going to do one of these three things, right? Um, come, come with me and do it. And like, at the time we were building like a vertical ad network. So like, you know, this is like 2007, 2008. Um, the big sort of thing happening at the time in the industry was in order to get online advertising, you needed to like concentrate eyeballs. And so this concept of vertical ad network existed, which is like, if you want to target, you know, millennials 18 to 34, you build a network of like yep. websites that has eyeballs in that space. And then you can sell on that scale. And so I was like, okay, that sounds interesting. Uh, I'm going to do that with you. And I ended up quitting GE with a job offer for a company that never ended up existing. Cause he was like, I'm doing one of these three things. I don't like exactly know which one yet. It depends on how a couple of things shake out. And, and so I <laughs> quit GE like five months into my six month rotation. And again, amazing program, right? Like it's an, it's an amazing program. It like creates amazing leaders in, in GE and outside of GE just wasn't for me. And uh, I moved to Manhattan and we ended up doing uh, sort of starting and building a company called complex media network together. Um, wow. and, and he's the guy who about 18 or 24 months in a complex media network was like, you know what, like come back to Philly with me and, and do shop runner. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Wow. So then, so shop. So anyway, that's how I got the startup into this like industry. That is right? amazing. Which is, which is just, which is, it all started with like, a, I was 15. It was making hoagies, making, making Philly cheesesteaks. Yeah. Yeah. That is on. Uh, unbelievable. Um, I, I didn't know the story. Uh, I may have known a couple pieces of it, but that's really amazing. So like, let's, let's look back at all that, right? If there was one thing you wish you had known, you know, getting into your career, um, you know, if there's one thing you'd wish you'd known before you began your career, what, what is it? Yeah. You know, and it's like, I don't know, I think it's going to sound a little, little cliche, but it's really the value of relationships. Like I, and I probably like realize this now more than before. Like I kind of thought that like that Mike Goldman story was just like an Emily and luck, right? Like, and like, okay, that like, and that relationship got me really, really far in my career. And frankly, I sort of owe almost everything I have to that, right? But I, I didn't realize that like, that example is happening so many times in my career, right? Which like someone, I knew that I built a relationship personally or professionally, like has helped drive me forward. And just like the value of relationships. I think you hear all the time. It's just, I like, I probably when I was 20 was like, you know, I got really lucky knowing my golden and, and now I'm like sort of on my own and have to figure it out. But the reality is like, uh, you know, like the guy I called who introduced me to GoPuff, right? Like that was a relationship that I had um in business like everything it's it's the value of relationships both both personally and professionally and professionally sort of for your career as well as for your business success right like who are the com- especially in like a partnership like who are the companies you work with you know i think it's important to like build those relationships like i think if something is not going well in a business deal I'd rather just have that conversation up front because I think like I've, I'm going to, that relationship with that guy at that company is like so valuable. And and it's not, it's like whoever I'm working with at that company, it's like he's, he or she's going to go somewhere else too. Like, and I, you build these relationships and, and if you don't bullshit people, right? Like just, just hop it out. That's amazing. Like it's not going well. Really like, why? Like, this isn't a fit. Like, yeah, no, and, and that's the I, way I like you are. You're very direct with that stuff, which is great. You know, if, if you look at your background and you just walk through a little bit of it, I mean, this guy, Mike, um, 
I'm going to ask you in a few minutes of three of the most influential people in your career and I think in your life, and I'm sure he's probably on that list, if not in the top three, probably close. But like you look at your your background, you look at your kind of like your DNA in, the, in your career and, and a lot of the organizations aside from GE are startups. So like when you're evaluating opportunities, when you're evaluating companies, once again, kind of coming out of, of what Mike did, how important is equity for you when you're looking at these companies? Oh, like, like stock. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Matt, Matt, like it's, I mean, I like lottery tickets. Right. Um, and like, I think equity is just like massively important and, and uh, you know, at different points in your career, you're evaluated a bit differently, I think. Right. Um, but it's, uh, it's massive. So keeping with a breath of fresh career and, and, and the idea around this whole podcast, what, what advice would you give someone wanting to pursue a career similar to yours? Yeah. You know, and we like talked about this a bit in the intro too, like, I think, I think you need to sometimes just like go with your gut and, and take a chance. And, and I think you have to do that carefully, but like, I have so many conversations with people about like thinking about jobs or careers, uh, and you know, friends or, you know, people that we're losing connected with, but personally, specifically friends where like, they're talking to me about these companies, like, Oh, like I'm thinking about this company or that company for, for whatever reason. And they like sort of lay it out and like, or like, I don't want to say like overanalyzing it, but like they're, they're, they have like a checklist and they want to make sure it fits their perfect sort of world of what they're looking for. And again, I think it's like really important to know what you want and don't want, but like, I think you can like overanalyze some of these things. Sometimes like you lose sight of the big picture, right? Like, I think there's a lot of value in like, finding a company that's doing really interesting things with like people that you like and the, the rest will work itself out. Right. And I think that like, you know, like I, there's someone I'm, I'm, you know, close with and, you know, when I was talking with her and she's looking at these opportunities, she's like, yeah, but like, it doesn't fit this box for me or it doesn't fit this box for me. And I remember thinking to myself, like, I'm not sure you're ever going to find something that meets this criteria. And again, like I, I do think it's important to like know what you want and don't want. But I, I like, you just gotta go with your gut sometimes. Like when I when I when I met this this GoPuff thing, like I was like, okay, like this is like interesting. I know some people here. It's in Philly. Business is growing quick. Like this job may not like exactly check every box for me, but like I'm like there's enough good about it we're like i'm gonna i'm gonna make this leap man right? i i i agree i call um, it the gold i call it the golden box right and uh and um I, i've got to evaluate these things when i'm talking to client companies of mine right you know let me give you a quick example i'm working a <coughs> senior director vp of e-business for it's the largest um the largest supply company for like industrial equipment and concrete and all this stuff. Like, you know, any major construction job um, that is done in and around the Philly area, these guys have that contract. I mean, they've got like thousands yeah. of clients, right? And I mean, they do like billion dollar jobs. You know, they did the big dig right. in Boston. I mean, you think about that, you know what I mean? It's like huge. <laughs> well, with COVID, um, you know, Salespeople, a, uh, a management, they weren't always on, on site, but building was still kind of continuing, right? And they, re they recognized that they need to develop some sort of an online presence so that as sure. aside from like this is who we are website, like something where, Ashish, if you're running the big dig and you need, you know, you need to add something to your order, you go online, you can add it to your order. You know what I mean? And, and yeah, instead right. of like having to worry about, you know, a salesperson coming around and all this other stuff, and, you know, blah, blah, blah. But they're developing this, this e-business now, um, which is kind of like going to be first, first to the market for one of these huge, yeah, I mean, they're a right. $5 billion company. And uh, I was talking to the VP of sales and I, I get nervous, man. I get really, really nervous when I ha have these conversations because like, he's telling me all this stuff that the golden box, right? He's telling me like the bullseye and, and I'm over here going like this, like, no. Uh, and he's like, what? And I said, it's not, it's not possible. 
Like what you're looking for is like three or four positions into one. We got to focus on right. one role. What's the most important thing? Right. And by the way, man, like that's, that's for me, that's where good recruiting starts is having the, the chutzpah to, uh, to say no. Like, listen, you, listen I, this is my industry. Yeah. I'm an expert in this industry. First of all, it's a super competitive market right now. Meaning like right, candidates right. have like three, five, right. four, you're not the only game in town, different opportunities. Yeah. And it, the more you throw at this, right, the less opportunity we're going to have to find the right person. So like, just like you were speaking about your friends, like they've got, they've got all these boxes they need to check and, and it's not realistic. So you're right, man. Trust your gut, take the chance um, in, in, in potential. That's super interesting, right? The company's got to do that too. I never thought about that. Oh yeah. Like, as I think about recruiting, right? You're trying to find the perfect person. And that's super interesting to think about. Actually. You know, my job starts with the client company. That's really, that's really, yeah. and, and, and my, my job really starts with that education. Um, I'm working with another client that's overseas. Uh, they're Australia based. And, you know, I, I, I've told them multiple times, like, no, you're guys, this is, this is the largest market in the world right here. You know, North America, like you can't, this isn't a test market. You've tested an APAC right. and EMEA. Okay. It was successful. You need to change your approach to come here. Like, I'm just super direct. And you know what? I, you know, I'd probably say my wife is always, Cindy's always like, Maybe you shouldn't be so direct, but like it sets the stage, man. It sets the stage, and 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 um, I'm trying to I'm trying to provide you know the best re recruitment experience I possibly can for my client companies and candidates alike. But like if the expectations are incorrect from the start, it's never going to happen. Yeah. Never going to happen. Yeah. You know, my experience with you has always been on the on the the recruit e side, the candidate, I guess, right? right? Where we're talking about is it? Yeah, the candidates are. And uh, you've always been like really, like, you're like, here's what it is and here's what it's not, right? And here's where the people are and here's who they're not, right? And, you know, I think a lot about that, right? Which is like, you're, you're, you're making sure that I'm or anyone's going an eye open on both sides of this thing, right? Here's the good, here's the bad, here's the opportunity, here's the upside, here's why you really should consider it, here's why you're a good fit. Like, it's really interesting. Thank you. I, I, I appreciate you saying that uh, little plug for Woodbridge Worldwide. No, I am um, going really quickly back to a breath of fresh career. You know, let's talk about three people in your life and your career that have been most influential to you. Who, who are they? Yeah, I mean, look, you, you already figured out one, but Mike Golden has been just a true friend and mentor and sort of every, even, even when I was making the GoPuff decision, I called him. What do I, what do, I do? Right. Uh, because it's like, how does this work? Right? What? <laughs> He's like, like, it just didn't check all the boxes. Right. And, um, for me, and I call it as Mike, like, I got like, what do I do here? Right. Like I'm a pretty analytical guy. Like I think, of, I think in spreadsheets. Right. Um, and so when I have to get out of that comfort zone for a minute, I'm like, what do I do? I saw like, for, for sure hand, um, you know, second, like both, both my parents, right. Like my parents, you know, immigrated here when right out of college had like true had nothing story. Right. And like, just worked hard. And I think like instilled in, in myself and my brother is like an amazing work ethic. Um, like they're still working away and they don't, they don't need to anymore, but, they, but so definitely, definitely them. I think like, you know, um, and, and no order, like my wife, she's, she's an amazing partner for me. She's always sort of pushed me and supported me in, in all of these things, whether it's like, I'm going to go do this go puff thing or like when I was like, Hey, we shouldn't, maybe we need to think about moving. Manhattan. Like, okay. I, right. I remember like, that. I remember that. She's always been very supportive. Yeah. 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 It's very important. You, um, you're in a very innovative industry, man. Um, what do you, what are you seeing? What's next out there? Are you seeing anything exciting? <laughs> yeah. I mean, look, like I, I, I think there's like a couple of things, right. And, um, you know, even taking my GoPro hat off for a second, like, in like in the like sort of internet e-commerce delivery space which is like where i've spent my career like this instant delivery thing is is coming like you know we're i think a, a pioneer in the space we figured it out early but like every conversation i have with all of these companies that they're trying to figure it out like how do you how do you do it how do you get how do you get there faster i think like the only other thing is like it is really right now all about the customer like customers have so much power 
it, and and companies need to sort of do right by them and you need to really think about the customer experience and if you, if you don't get it right like there's plenty of other options right now right or whatever it is um and and so like i think like the customer has a, a lot of power it's a great time to be a consumer i think companies have to like kind of rise to that challenge and and really balance all sides of the business but with a customer first and i think that like a lot of people say customer first every job i've had is a customer first right so, uh, but like i think now customers like really have the power because you know there's just ton, tons of options and you're going to win by doing right by the customer. Uh, but I also, so I think a lot, like I think the delivery space is going to really evolve. I think that um, fast speed, convenient selection is going to be key. Um, and I think that the customer really matters. And then like, and then you got to figure out at some point how to do all that profitably. Yeah. Yeah. Like I think profitability is going to start mattering again. <laughs> it better it better start mattering again. It sounds like you guys have it nailed down. What um you working on any other kind of like any other projects? And by the way, it could be anything. It could be like, hey, we're putting in a row of hedges this holiday weekend at home. What you know, what are you what are you working on? What are you doing? You know, you know, man, life is busy, right? Um, Two kids, yeah. The 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 big I mean Personally, there's all sorts of stuff going on. We're, we're actually like moving in a couple of weeks and trying to move with two kids. It's sort of crazy. Um, same school, same but, school uh, system or, or different? So we're, we're moving for school system, actually. Okay. Um, our kids aren't in sort of school yet. And so we always knew that we wanted to um, move for a different school district. And so like, it's like, wow, eight years flew by. Time to really think about that. Um, but like, look, the biggest, the biggest thing is like, I'm just trying to work on, on being a good husband and dad, like, you know, work in a sort of grueling place. Uh, you know, the hours sort of are, are long, it's demanding, it's full, it's fun, right? Um, but like, you know, it's the first time I've had like two, two in my career, I've had two kids. Like I used to be able to like kind of hundred percent hundred percent of myself to work, right? And, whatever it took. And like, now you got to balance it a little bit more. And that's like a, a change, right? It's definitely um, a challenge, man, because so just, you go against yeah. kind of like your normal, it's, it's not your wants because you want to be with your kids. You know, like, let me give you, I'll give yeah, you an right. example on my own, my own side. Like, you know, my kid plays hockey. My kid does a bunch of other sports. He plays golf. And this is just an example from, from yesterday. Uh, was it yesterday? Yeah, it was, it was yesterday. Um, I, I texted him. He was up at the house doing his homework. I converted a barn in my backyard to an office, you know, through, through the whole COVID thing. It was amazing. Um, and, uh, which gets me out of the house. Right. So like, I'm like the end, everyone's envy now because I, my commute's like five, 600 feet, uh, you know, perfect, perfect. Work, working from home. Um, and it, it doesn't look that way, but it's awesome. I got my own network. And long story <laughs> short, I texted him. I said, be ready to go for five five o'clock and I had to literally turn the computer off because I would have kept doing what I was doing. Uh, but we went and played nine holes. We threw the golf bags on our back and yeah, walked right. nine holes. Right. And, uh, you got, you got to flip the switch sometimes, man, because you know, you, yeah. all this working from home as well, like we're getting started a lot earlier than if, if we were going to an office and like, you know, you're working all the time. So yeah, like, no, 100%. shut the laptop at five o'clock, five thirty, whatever. And you got, a bunch of hours that you normally wouldn't have in order to, you know, do things with the kids, which is, yeah. I'm finding it's awesome. Um, back on the advice track, you know, we got a bunch of listeners here. Um, what advice would you give these listeners, uh, work, life, entrepreneurship, et cetera. And by the way, you've already touched on some of that, like, you know, trying to be a, a, a better husband, a, a better dad yeah. is one, but like, what else? Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I think I'm still in advice seeking mode, not that giving mode for, for the record. But um, I, I've learned a lot about myself the last 18 months. Um, and I think that, like, we, we, to your point, we kind of talked a lot about this a little bit. But, like, I used to just be like, money, 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 money is everything. Like, 20s, grind it out, it's all about money. But, like, your priorities change. And I think you have to, like, change with them, right? Like, you know, as you, your life situation changes, you have kids, whatever, like, how does that all, you have to think about like how that all comes together, right? So for example, in 2019, I guess, the year before I joined Go, I was on 55 flights that year. Um, and, you know, was playing the status game. And like, I thought I loved it. Like, I was like, 
I'm, you know, first class because I'm, you know, American Airlines plan I'm pro. Like, Marriott is upgrading me to like the biggest room they have because I have like whatever status. Um, and, and there was like definitely personal benefits that too. Like, you're on vacation, and have amazing experiences. But like, I don't, I, I don't think you ever want to go back to that. Now. Right? And it just goes back to like, how do you balance all these things? It's important to like know sort of what you want and what you don't want and figure out what's important. And I think like really related to that is like, just like don't sweat the small stuff, right? Like, wow. and we talked loosely about this throughout, but it's like, really think about what matters and what doesn't. And like, if, again, it's important to know what you want and don't want, but like, what's going to be the most impactful and how? And like, that that's the stuff to worry about. Like, some of the small stuff, I think you just like, you Life's too busy, dude. There's too many other things. Like, just don't talk about the small stuff. Uh, it, I'm 47 years old, man, and I battle that every single minute. I mean, like, literally, my wife is so good at it. She doesn't even need, notice the small stuff. And I'm, like, a small stuff kind of, like, guy. You know, like, every, I mean, everything. You know, like, and I don't know. It, I think it partially ties into my upbringing, right? Is like, my parents did a really good job you know, get giving us what we needed, but we didn't have like a ton. I didn't have, like, I think about it. I don't think, you know, at my age as a kid, we didn't really have much. We had a bike, we had a baseball glove. We had a freaking, uh, uh, hockey, I was a hockey player. We had a street hockey stick. Like okay. we left in the morning in the summer, summertime. And like with that stuff, we didn't have a lunch, you know, wherever we were, like wh who was ever mom or dad was home, like would make us PB and J's and we'd eat them on the front right. porch or whose ever house we were. But like the street lights came on and we had to be home. Like we didn't have much. Right. So like right. I re everything had its own little place for me. Now my kid has got everything. He's got everything. And like, right. I, I'm like, oh my God, the kid didn't make his bed today. What the heck? That's small, right? It's the small stuff. But like I made my bed because I valued my bed. Uh, I, I, I saw, I saw a public speak, uh, public speakers, like some admiral in the Navy or something. He's like, you know, if I can give you one piece of advice every single morning, make your bed, because if you, if you have a complete shit day, at least, you know, you've accomplished something. You started your day by accomplishing something and you have a complete shit day. You come home to what you accomplished. Like everybody on the face of the earth. I don't care if you're Bill Gates or, uh, Warren Buffett or, or me or you, we make our bed. So like, you know, but so I see that as th that's something that's a small thing, but it means so much to me. It's so crazy, man. It's so, yeah. it is so hard to separate that. And like, I don't know. Well, when, don't you're know. In the, when you're in the day to day, whatever it is, personally and professionally, like it, and sometimes like, it feels like everything matters. Right. And it, it's like, okay, like, let me just take a step back and like really assess like what, what, what is, I don't know that I'm good at it for the record. Right. But like. It's important to like really, really think about what matters. Yeah, that's great. Sheesh, if you were in my shoes, um, what would you have asked yourself that I didn't? You know, we ended up like kind of loosely touching on it, but like, look, you know, you know the history. I'll never forget the call I made to you that surprised you, and I said, "I'm, I'm going to actually do this scope up thing," right? And I'm like, and, "What?" And like, Opa. who? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I was feeling the same thing. I was feeling the same thing you were feeling like, you know, a month before, three weeks before when you're like, who is this go puff? What is this go puff? I'm seated. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt. And, and so we, we talk about it. No. And it's like, it's like, why, like, like, why did I take it? Right. And like, looking back, it was a genius move. Right. But I didn't have that crystal ball. And, and, and I just want to like reiterate, like for me, I think there's something about like the people, the product and the role. And like, it honestly didn't check every one of my boxes, but like, there's something to be said about like, just feeling passionate about what the company is doing. Right. Like, I think if you like can touch it and feel it and believe it, like you bring your best self to everything you do. Cause you're like, you know, the product, you get the product, you it gets a fun space. And like, if you're excited about the product, that's going to come out in everything that you do, right? Every conversation you have, you're just naturally excited about it. You talk faster, you talk louder. It's like, you know, and, and, and I think that for me, like just that combination of things, and I sort of learned it on the way, but like, that's why I picked GoPuff, right? And, and again, we've kind of loosely talked about these things, but it really came down to like the people, the product and the role. And, um, 
and something I could get excited about, right? Like there's there there's something to be said about taking a job because I want a new job and and just different experience. So there's something to say about like finding something really exciting that you could believe in. Yeah. Well, we're wrapping up here, man. Uh, I really appreciate your time, Ashish. I appreciate the the the, the conversation and, and the value you bring to a conversation like this and to the listeners. Where can our listeners connect with you online? What's the best way to do it? Yeah, look, LinkedIn, right? Okay. Um, just, just look me up. I think that's that's the I'll best. Put a, way. I'll put a link to your um, LinkedIn profile in this in the bio. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Cool, man. Man, I. Uh, was there anything else? I appreciate it. I, um, I, I want to be mindful of your time. You've already spent 45 minutes with me. So thank you so much. No, this has been super fun. I'm, I'm glad you, you reached out. Um, uh, I, you know, prioritize this in my day. Cause I like, it's fun to do this kind of stuff and, and sort of, you know, I've known you for so long at this point that, you know, I consider you a, a friend, not a, I know, man. I love you. Thank you. Sort of thank you for work for, relationship at this point for jumping in on this and I'll send you the links. Um, you know, one of the things that, so I, you may or may not know this. I don't make money doing this. I'm just trying to bring value to, you know, to people um, with regards to, you know, any advice that, you know, my my guests can, you know, share. Um, so yeah. I ask that everybody, uh, everybody, you know, try to share this with their network and I'll send you the links to it. Actually, we had one one guy who was um, the president of a company by the name of Outfront Inc. He had, uh, I think he had 700 views on YouTube of, of his, uh, podcast. With wow. me. Like just, I mean, like, that's incredible. You know, like I started this yeah. a year ago, you know, like, <laughs> you know, it was really cool though. She said, if you haven't heard that one, um, his name is, uh, his name's Chuck Pearl. Um, I'll send you the link to that too. But what he talks about, man, is one, it's true entrepreneurship, but two, the basics of sales, right? He touches on them. And by the way, like, it's the stuff we do every single day. We just don't know we're doing it. And right. like, and the guys, right. he's been, he's been doing this for 70 years. Right. So like, you know, yeah. so, you know, so like long story short, if you were to listen to that, you, it, you'd be like, oh my God, you know, like, yeah. I mean, we, we think about all these different sales methodologies, right? Challenger and all this yeah. stuff. Like, just listen to this guy because, because, <laughs> you know, it's very basic. It's very rudimentary, but guess what? It worked. It, it works and it's been working forever. So yeah, super yeah. interesting. Yeah, it's really cool. So I'll ask that you share this with your network and um man For sure. uh more power to you, buddy. I appreciate you and uh and we'll be in we'll be in touch here soon. Yeah, let's talk soon. All right, buddy. Thank you so much for having me. Thanks. Bye. Right. Bye. Bye. You still there?